20, um, 20 project calls for GNU Radio. Um, I would appreciate if someone could just quickly check Twitch just to make sure it's generally working. Um, we are streaming this on Twitch because we're so uh, you know up to date with the cool stuff. You're showing the agenda. Yes, good. Can people hear what I'm saying? Yes. Excellent. All right. So we have a bunch of items today. Um, and you're showing the agenda. Yes, good. <laughs> okay, I'm getting an echo now. Is it from me or is it from someone else? Killed it. Was me. Oh, okay. Good. First agenda item is Gunner Radio Conference. Okay, I'm just going to hand it straight over to Derek because we are already a bit late. Um, we have a bunch of announcements for GRCon. Great. Uh, thank you. So this will probably come as no surprise to many folks. Uh, due to current world of events, we are not going to hold a physical GRCon this year. We've decided that that's just not the best path forward for us, for the attendees, et cetera. Uh, so instead, on the same days, so that's September 14 through the 18th, uh, we will be live streaming uh, a half day of talks on Monday through Thursday. So this will be the same sort of lineup that we've had in previous years. Uh, the call for participation is open. The first deadline for that is this Friday, but we will be taking um, submissions after that and accepting them on a rolling basis. Uh, so the Monday through Thursday will be a half day of talks live streamed uh, for free. So if you've never attended GRCon and you want to get involved with it live, this is going to be the year to do it. Um, we'll have published all of the details of exactly how this is going to work uh, up on the GNU Radio website. We're currently reworking the registration right now. But the, the big takeaway there is if you already bought a ticket, you're getting a refund. Uh, and you'll be able to watch the live stream and participate in the community chat channels um, for free. During the afternoons, we have a whole lineup already of workshops and tutorials that are being submitted. And so I think we're going to have a lot of really uh, fun stuff from a lot of the usual uh, people and organizations who come. Uh, and those will be uh, all covered by one flat registration fee of $50. So also, hopefully uh, fairly accessible. It'll be free for pre-registered students, um, just exactly the same as we've had in previous years. Um, all you have to do is uh, submit proof of enrollment and um, we'll be able to get you in. The Friday of the week will again be a developer's focus time. Obviously, it'll still be remote, but we think that that hopefully should work out pretty well. And that'll be uh, breaking out into some pre-organized working groups and then also ad hoc whatever people want to be working on. Hopefully, we'll be able to self-organize that on the day of. Now, we were really looking forward to going to Charlotte. Uh, and we were partnered up with um, Tapper, uh, Tapper DCC, the Digital Communications Con uh, Conference um, run by the Tucson Amateur Radio Oh dear, uh, I only ever call them Tapper. Uh, and so I'm not sure what the acronym fully is, but the Tucson Amateur Radio Group. And uh, we will be moving all of our dates for Charlotte to next year. So we can already announce uh, for the earliest time ever that GNU <laughs> Radio Conference 21 uh, will be September 20 to 24th uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we haven't got submissions or registration open for that yet, but um, those will definitely be live by the time GRCon this year comes around. And we're really, really looking forward to being back all together and having fun with that. But this year is going to be a chance to try out some new things. And if you want to be involved in organizing this year's conference or next year's conference, there's definitely still a lot of time, uh, four months to do that and of course tons of time for the following year and we will need some assistance with um you know managing the social channels and just meet and greeting new people because we expect we'll probably get a bunch of people dropping in who aren't already familiar with guinea radio uh and then we have various MCing and av things that we're just going to need hands for so we would love volunteers for that if you have any talks uh, or workshops or any other form of participation that you'd like to have, um, you know, join in with, uh, definitely check out the GNU Radio website. 
Right now it all says that it's still a physical event, but that'll be updated hopefully by the time you're, you're watching this or, or another day or two from now. I think that's most of the important notes, uh, most or all of the important notes. The information will go up on the website. We'll send an email out to the mailing list. Um, this is a decision that we're sad to be making, but we're glad that we're making it early so we can all plan for this to be as good of an event as possible. I think you did forget one important thing, but but I'll, I'll, I'll say that, which is um, the GNU Radio Conference Organization Committee, which you know Derek is a part of and Michelle and others, um, you know, I'm just, I'm continue to be amazed by the work that you guys do. And then, you know, like an entire um, pandemic hits the planet and then, you know, there's still a good plan uh, to, you know, come up with something else. Um, like, I just want to, you know, speak for the community community and say, well, thanks, thanks for all the work, um, but also like, <laughs> it's really, really good work. Uh, really fantastic um, plan. And I really, really, I mean, given like the current situation, I can hardly imagine a better outcome, to be honest. Um, so yeah, thanks for doing that. Definitely. Um, I may be the one on the call here, but uh, Michelle, Sam, and Dana have been uh, pulling a massive amount of, of work to, to make this happen. All right. Um, I'm just going to go on to the next agenda item here. Um, release 3.8 just re recently happened. And of course, we have the maintainer live in our studio to talk about that. <laughs> well, I'm really happy to be alive and in the studio. Um, so on April the 8th, I've tagged and rated 3.8.1, um, which was really overdue. Um, like basically any radio release. Um, contain a lot of pretty cool features. Um, is also a very important bug fix release. So if you are um, running Noradia 3.8 and think there is something that could be improved, it's possible that that happened in 3.8.381. Uh, um, uh, let me quickly check, some, check my notes on that. Um, so um, we fixed a lot of bug fixes, um, tests that um, uh, were wrongly correct. It turned out that um, that actually worked out in the past. Um, uh, we... Um, um, managed to eradicate another couple of shutdown bugs that were related to how the lifetime of objects in the scheduler were incorrect. Um, and we've also done a lot of um, code optimization. So there's um, modernization and speed up in a couple of things that Clang Tidy, which is a pretty nice tool from the Clang community, um, made possible so that's that's been pretty uh awesome on the other hand um we've also developed um uh fur and that mainly happens um on the master branch not on the main 38 branch which means that at some point it's planned that you know 38 and master will diverge and that's that's really a good thing and planned like that because it allows us to you know develop forward instead of trying to be backwards compatible forever on and then only backport the things that people actually need when they need it. So um, that means that three A uh, that the master branch will become three nine or maybe even four if we break something very fundamentally and consider it worth that. Um, and this is kind of the point where you know, 3.8 and 3.9 might start to diverge in a way that you would notice if you uh, developed uh, an, an out of tree module. And so, um, as you might know, that Nuray um, 3.8 is the only release that is both compatible with Python 2 and Python 3. We're not doing that anymore for Nuray for 3.9 because that was too much of a hassle in the long term. Also, Python 2 is pretty dead. So, 
Um, if you're now starting to work, say you're at university, you're starting a, a thesis on anything and you're writing an out of three model, it might be a good time to actually write it in Python 3 and make sure it's comfortable with the master branch so that it will work in a year. Um, what the then currently released narrator, whatever version that is at that point. Yeah, cool. A lot of development going on. Um, yeah, it really is. So, um, Marcus, can you quickly speak on the lifetime of the main 3.8 branch? Um, yeah, sure. So, I mean, the name is for, like it's a contraction for maintained 3.8 branch. Basically, we we promise that we'll keep that alive um, even after we release um, in array 3.9. That is kind. I mean, kind of. Um, self-explanatory because we try to you know make people use our released versions because we hope that we fix most mistakes in these um so we're we're not dropping anything anytime soon it's just as it took maybe two years by now um to um and we're still updating the main 37 branch right we've we've just released a 37.14.0 release like, no one really noticed that because there's less and less users of Narrative 3.7, um, but we're not letting anyone die. Um, so as long as um, the like this this like we I don't have my crystal ball with me and I can't look into the future. But um, as as a rough estimate, as long as people will have Narrative um, 3.8 in available for their um, for the then recent long-term supported Linux distros, it's probably gonna be alive and well and kept up to date with these uh, these long-term Linux distro releases. So uh, as of now, that would be actually 20 or Ubuntu 20 or four probably. Um, so as long as Ubuntu uh, doesn't do the next LTS release after 2004, we can be pretty sure that there's enough developers still working on Nora 3.8 to keep the bug fixes coming. So um, I don't think you, you need to think about how to abandon ship anytime soon. Yeah, and people have been keeping the bug fixes coming. I'm always amazed yeah. to see that um, like people on their own volition um, provide three pull requests against master 37 and 38 so that's that's really yeah cool. <laughs> it's like I have been really like in the last uh, month or two I've been amazed by the amount of, of work that people just put in like come out of nowhere just put in a lot of work are really helpful and like responsive and you know react greatly to to what we uh, suggest and ask of them so um, this is a very um, I can't remember a time in the project where it was that active with respect to new users being feeding in so many features and bug fixes so quickly. This is pretty cool. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the 3.9 or the, the master branch rather. So we have um, there, there's two big changes. One has already happened. Um, one is in the pipeline. The first one, removal of the folks up module pointer is really not a big thing um, in in some sense, but it does probably it will probably throw people off. So yeah. um, let me quickly wrap that up. So I, we actually summarized it on our blog here, um, but let me quickly summarize that. So Folk was originally part of Gnu Radio, but very quickly we realized, wait a minute, this is a super cool project. We want it to be its own project, um, but then it was already in Gnu Radio. And so what what to do? What to do? So we decided, well, we'll keep the Folk where it was, but instead of the code being tracked in the Gnuradio repo, we'll just track a submodule pointer. And then when you build Gnuradio, it looks like Volk is in tree, but it's it's really not. It's sort of out of tree. Um, and it was always the intention to fully remove that from Gnuradio and just make it a dependency. And that's what we did. Um, and the only reason it took us so long um, was, first of all, we didn't want to, but we wanted to sort of let Volk mature a little bit. Because like when we had to, um, you know, pull and fixes from Falk every week, like this would have been impractical. But then um, also like Volk was in this weird limbo state and we wanted to remove it from that, just to make it very clear. And um, the, 
yeah, I think another reason it just took so long was like there was actually some infrastructure for us that we had to change. Like the, the CI system, for example, couldn't just build GNU Radio including everything. Like it had to, um, you know, have folk around, but then main 3.7, main 3.8, and master branch all have a different minimum version of folk, which we have to test against. So um, Andre did all of the CI work, which we're very grateful for. Um, but the, you know, the actual removal of folk was really not that much work. It just just some CMake fiddling. So if you um, you know git pull and then um, try and build master branch and it fails and it'll tell you, oh wait, I, I couldn't find folk. You might be surprised because if you just git pull, like the folk does not get removed from your um, directory. Like if you do ls, like it's still there, um, but it doesn't get pulled into the build anymore. So you have to build it yourself. Um, we will tweak PyBombs to make that um, easier. But um, for those people who build for binary, it doesn't really matter. Like we just, we'll just have to provide proper binaries in the future. Um, yeah, but for those people who sort of build from source, like they might at one point be a little bit surprising. Yeah. There's really not much to add here, um, unless Marcus, you have something that I forgot. I've just, actually, like, it, it started with people on, on, um, on the internets and um, I, I just want to stress that this happened on the master branch, so it's not going to break your installation of GNU Radio anywhere if you're using a released version of GNU Radio, which you, if you didn't build from source yourself, most definitely are. So um, as we're, we at least try to be in close contact with all our binary packagers, um, at least those that we know of, but these are probably the most important ones. Um, we're pretty optimistic that the transition will be super smooth. And um, just so you know that removing Vogue out of the new radio tree, you know, changed nothing about how the Vogue project itself is run. It's like run by uh, Michael and Johannes of the new radio community. They, you know, we talk a lot. Um, Michael's actually on the call here. so. Um, we are 100% sure that we're not breaking anything. On the other hand, if you're using Woke in an external software that is not in radio, this now becomes a lot easier because you just have to, you know, you can now rely on not having a new radio and or separately installed Woke version. So this makes it actually a lot easier to deal with a lot of things. OK. So. Um... The other big change that we have in the pipeline is uh, PyBind. And um, I'll quickly summarize what's going on here. So the least favorite dependency that we have <laughs> in Gnu Radio is Swig. <laughs> um, and so what Swig does is it takes the C++ code and it sort of exposes it into Python, which means we can write all these Python programs that use Gnu Radio under the hood. There's almost no performance downside to that. Like you, you run at the speed of C++, but that the convenience of, of Python. Um, like overall, it's it's a really fantastic tool. However, it is extremely, extremely hard to maintain. It's one of the few things where over like the course of 10 years, I still don't know what I'm doing every time I touch a .i file. But it, it is also like, um, as dependencies go, a little bit awkward to manage. Like, I mean, I mean, they're a big project. They have like new versions every once in a while um, and so on. So one thing we've decided to take a look at is to remove Swig. And we currently have some effort going in that direction that is pretty promising. And it um, uses PyBind 11 instead of Swig. The major downside to PyBind 11 is that Swig would allow us to wrap other languages as well. So we could have gone to Python, but also to, I don't actually know, Scheme, JavaScript, I don't know. Stuff like that. Um, but realistically, we're not going to do that. So this was not really a downside for us that mattered. Um, there are some, there are a lot of advantages though. So first of all, uh, PyBind 11 um, is much lighter as it goes, um, you know, as, a, as dependencies go. Um, it, it looks like that it'll actually speed up our compilation times and especially recompilation times when you modify something. Um, and PyBind 11 is really simple to use and extremely well documented. 
Um, I've used it on other projects. There's no, I have not had a single question where the actual manual itself did not answer the question perfectly for me. Um, and it, you know, and it's searchable and everything. So it's, it's really good. Um, so we, you know, we, we really think this is worth um, the effort. Now, the big problem is not the work that we have to do to do the transition, but rather um, the effect that it'll have on out of tree modules. So um, the one thing that Swig does better than PyBind is you can point it at a header file and it'll figure out what to do by itself because it's like a full-fledged compiler. Whereas um, PyBind requires you to write C++ code to, exp to expose the, the, the block into Python. The binding needs to be written manually. So that's where most of our work is going is to sort of automate that process. The um, end result of that will probably be that most blocks, which are follow a simple structure, um, can be uh, um, exposed into Python with no uh, manual work, just because we can script that. But the, the blocks where it's difficult, they will require manual work. And I think that's actually an advantage because um, even in Swig, those blocks needed some kind of manual intervention. However, um, doing manual intervention in PyBind is, is a lot, lot easier, a lot more straightforward. And you have sort of much more easy direct access to the underlying Python types if you know what you're doing um, and you know things like, things like that. Yeah, also when it goes wrong, it goes wrong at compile time. It's not like Swig where you at runtime get told that no, this is not an vector of integers, you can't use that, and you're left to wonder what that actually would then be. Um, so yeah, that's I'm very true. much looking forward to not having debugged that kind of issue anymore. So I'm, I'm just going to quick anecdote about PyBind. It does sometimes have runtime errors, but almost always the runtime error is accompanied by a suggestion for how to change your C++ code. And like I've almost always been lucky with that. It says something like, oh, maybe you should include this file, and then it'll, it'll just work. It's, it's amazing. So um, there's going to be changes for out of tree modules, and we're very sorry about that. But also, we don't really see a way of seriously developing Gino Radio going forward without having that kind of effect. So uh, in that, we're, you know, we're not that much different from other projects that have a huge plugin base. You know, like even like website stuff, like WordPress, will you know, will will um, occasionally make API changes that require uh, you know that make plugins incompatible. So you know we don't we don't we we don't do that to to annoy people like we promise we think these through very very carefully, um, but you know that's the way it is. <laughs> okay, um, that that that's it for Pybind. <laughs> uh, this is more of an announcement. Like oh yeah no I did want to poke at the, uh, sorry I did want to show this branch here. Um, this is on our GNU Radio remote. Um, it's mostly well. When I say mostly, I mean 100% authored by Josh at this point, who's put in all the work. Um, yeah, you can just check it out, see how it's going. All right. So finally, let's talk a little bit about open issues and pull requests and all of those good things. So first of all, Nate um, was um, had the foresight to you know, put this on the agenda. We actually have a lot of issues on our issue tracker. If you go to Kuno Radio on GitHub, you click issues, and then you sort by this label, good for first issue, you'll find out a whole bunch of issues that are easily fixable by beginners. Well, that obviously depends a little bit on your background. But um, like we've picked a couple here that we think are a really good place to start. So um, if you're thinking about joining us, um, you know, and working on community, we'd be really happy. And we will also help you like find a good place to start. And these labels are one of those things. Now I say like, if you want to join us, like, and um, I don't want to come over desperate here um, because we are actually very, very lucky recently. Um, just the amount of people who've been contributing is, is amazing. It's, it's a lot. Um, let's see if I can do my, oh man, what was the, Was it, how do I how do I just someone know off my heart how I filter by pull request from the last year? I've like since something one one anything this no. uh, sort by date uh, most recently updated. 
Yeah, there's a there's a I, I use a search query, but I've forgotten it right now. But okay, how do I sort by date? Um, Top right. Sort. Well, I can, I wanted to see the number. Like it's, so it'll it'll tell me the number here. If I sort by date, then I don't get the number. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, but like we must be like into many many hundred pull like hundreds of pull requests at this point. I I look up the number, tweet it out later. But it's like fantastic. I mean, there's a couple of people I just want to mention. Um, I really everyone who submitted a pull request here um, is um, like you know a fantastic contributor. But I just want to give shout out a couple of names. So Thomas Habits here um, has been extremely diligent in converting GNU Radio to more modern C++ code, which is, if you think about it, a bit of a thankful task. Uh, sorry, a non uh, the opposite of thankful. Like it's not very th like it is a bit of a task that doesn't have any like immediate effects like you you just like improve the code but it might run at the same speed as before it's just a little bit more future proof so like for him to take the time write a grab and then do all this work like it's really really great um and then ria 1019 um is extremely active but also i think i would just want to give him a particular shout out for remembering to always backport his stuff or even other people's stuff onto the old branches so I don't know which branch he's using. Maybe he's using all three, but I think I think he's just extremely diligent. Um, and then um, I didn't want to read out all those names. There's this there's this Marcus Muller guy who keeps posting stuff. No, um, most of his code is pretty mediocre. <laughs> which date did you want, Martin? I have it. I just beginning of the year, just as a reference. Uh, three hundred and thirty-one closed. And thirty-one <laughs> still open. Okay, so. 360 something pull requests. Moving on for, for like, I think we had something like 300 um, ish for all of 2019. <laughs> so we're like, we've already exceeded that. It's amazing. Um, there was no GR on this, this, this year yet. So something's broken here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and there's one other person I just want to mention. I don't want to list everyone who's been doing great work, but one person who's sort of joined the ranks a while ago and has been doing a lot of good work is Barry. Um, I think if I click on recent changes, I will see his name. Um, this guy, um, his his name is Barry. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Dugabe. Um, but anyway, he's like been very active on the documentation side. Um, like really, really, really important work here. Make put making sure the wiki is up to date. Like going through every single page, looking at all the stuff. And um, if you follow Derek at all on all the social medias, you'll know that. Um, that he ran through the tutorials recently. That was pretty cool. Um, but it, I think the video is up for post uh, retroactive for perusal. I think that's true, right, Derek? Twitch.tv slash Derek Kozel slash videos. <laughs> there you go. Um, and you can see him actually sort of um, running through all the tutorials, which was great. But also, um, like, you, you can see, like, the, the current state of the wiki there. So um, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's all I had. Um, we I have per oh, yes. Thank you, Derek, please. So um, before Windows, I have something else I actually want to shout out. So this, both of these things I'm going to talk about are related to uh, non-Linux platforms. We've had support I, in Mac ports for Mac OS for quite a long time now. and um, Michael, who is on the call right now, uh, has been the maintainer of that. But there's a group of people who have been looking for a way of installing GNU Radio just as a traditional application, um, rather than setting up a full development environment. And I wanted to give a particular shout out to um, Kate Temkin uh, and Bo, and I'm sorry, I've not got the tab open, so I don't know your last name, uh, who have been putting in a bunch of work recently to update the Mac binary installer. And there is now a binary installer for 3.8 uh, available. There's definitely still a few little corners that need to be polished off, but they're really minor, and there's people already very successfully using it. Um, that was shouted out on Twitter just in the last week. and. Um, Definitely, I think, you know, at least I'm really personally interested in, in getting that pulled in a bit more to the project and trying to distribute that a bit more prominently. Uh, what we don't have as well 
is that on Windows. We do have the community maintained um, Windows package that's built by uh, Jeff, Jeff Niebuhr, but it has been um, <laughs> uh, an intimidating amount of work for him to get as far as he has with it, and it does work, but I have yet to see anybody really successfully develop a, an out of tree module on Windows. Um, and so this is something that we as a project would like to change. And looking around um, the community, there's a few people who have some Windows experience, but nobody who's actively contributing uh, on a frequent basis who we think is able, who has the knowledge, the pre-existing knowledge and, and domain-specific experience to take GNU Radio to the Windows platform in, in the way that it should be. You know, it, it should really be uh, a library that feels like other native Windows libraries. You should be able to easily install it, easily develop against it, build your out of tree modules against a system install. Um, and you should be able to install GRC with a one click binary installer. We have that, but it's not nearly as graceful as we would like. And so um, as a project, we feel that we have the funding available to actually contract out this work uh, and bring in somebody who uh, has that expertise and that knowledge to get this job done really well. We're going to be putting together the tender for that. We will be publicly announcing that and at all stages being very transparent about how this goes. Um, but I wanted to shout out into the community that, you know, do you want NuGet? Do you want VC package? Um, what does a native GNU radio experience feel like to you? Uh, just be aware that as you submit these uh, pieces of feedback to us via Twitter, IRC, email, the list, Facebook, you know, where, wherever you find us, um, that I, you know, we we're looking for this as experience, and we're going to be leaning on the community to help us find this developer as well. We're hoping that somebody out there um, knows someone who has that experience with uh, GTK, QT, CMake on the Windows platform. Uh, because we, we do want to get this done right and done in a way that we'll be able to maintain it for years to come. That's what I've got. Herr Brown? Mine? Ah, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I have a baby crying in the background here. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, no, this is the first. Um, very cool. Um, Actually, I, I do have something else. I, I just remembered. This is not something we have funding for, but um, I am also looking for um, someone who can take over the maintenance of pi bombs. So theoretically, that's 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 on me. But uh, clearly, I have not been putting in the time. Um, but it's something. There's a there is obviously interest. Um, uh, you know, given the amount of issues that get posted. And sort of to do the project uh, justice, I think it would be good if we could find someone of those people who are interested, um, yeah, to to help and you know become the maintainer of that. So, so as someone who's been using that and who knows the community for a while, Mario, it's not on you alone, right? All our <laughs> projects, like, seriously, it's not. Like all our projects are, are community projects, and so is is Pi Bombs. Um, what we are all hoping is that maintaining pi bombs will become easier in the future through things like having properly packaged external dependencies, through having our own digital uh, binary package distribution channels. So um, in case you're wondering how to install this cool new GNU radio, um, 3.8 something, you probably um, could just use the PPA, the, the Ubuntu package repository that we post um, to and get it today without having to run a compiler ever. So um, this hopefully will get easy in the future. Right now it's a lot of um, things that are very rewarding. Like people come to you and tell you that, you know, this is broken, I can't install radio on my totally standard Ubuntu whatever. And then you fix it and that's like very, Rewarding. Also, you make it work for your use case usually. Um, so, 
it's usually a, a win win situation. It's just that as the core developers, we are kind of limited on time. I think, yeah, I think that's a very common theme. So <laughs> let's not feel bad about that. Um, okay, and let's wrap up this call. I'm the the project call. So you know, we've heard it for the first time. We we try and do this every month. We usually have announcements. It is possible to join this call. It's just that rarely happens that outside people jump in, have questions. This would be the time to sort of um, see if we've forgotten something. Is there anything else that we want to add to the agenda? Oh yeah, um, conferences. So um, just as the Arcon, the European Gnu Radio um, days uh, were faced with the problem that they couldn't take place in person. So um, they asked around and they didn't get enough people to um, commit to doing it online. Um, so they postponed that by here. Um, they do recommend that if, if you're feeling, um, you know, if you have a strong desire for seeing the radio videos, um, uh, they uh, recommend that you watch the, or even better take part in the uh, SCR Academy at Ham Radio, which is end of June. Um, so that's the one thing that, you know, we can recommend at this time. Is uh, Ham Radio still happening? Um, I, I it so was officially probably... canceled today. Oh, so this finally happened. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, for all of us lucky people who um, who can you know work from home and all that, um, there'll be plenty of opportunities to continue your ready work. You'll just have to do it from home. <laughs> there's, there's a there's a vibrant community out there, as you know. Uh, available through the usual um, internet channels. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that. Is there anything else that's gotten canceled? Any other event that needs some attention? Nope. Okay, cool. Well, then that's it. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Th um, thanks for everyone who's contributing code and documentation and emails and whatnot. Um, very much appreciated. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.